Hi, welcome to the semantics lecturelet about modification. Now this lecturelet will be about modification in an intuitive sense, and in another lecturelet we'll start to discuss it more in a formal sense. Now modification, at its heart, involves uh, using one expression to provide more information related to another. And the nature of this modification is uh, an important aspect of trying to understand uh, how meanings get put together because there is very simple modification and then there's very complicated modification and we'll get to we'll talk about some of these in detail now when we think about modifiers uh, the you know classic category is the adjective and we have something like gray which is an adjective and if we use it to modify a noun like cat we get gray cat and uh, the use of an adjective or a modifier to uh, add additional information about something we're talking about is what's called an attributive use. So if we say the gray cat is cute, then the use of this modifier is attributive. It's uh, helping us specify which cat we're talking about, but it, it's something that we're uh, already taking as given. Whereas the use of an adjective over here, cute, inside the verb phrase is what's called predicative. And a predicative use is simply uh, the use of, uh, of, a, of an, a modifier as an assertion. So when we say the great cat is cute, then we're asserting that it has this property, whereas we're taking for granted that it has this one. Uh, and when we say we're taking it for granted, it's not quite a presupposition or anything like that. It's just that we're not making an assertion about the grayness of the cat. We are making one about the cuteness, though. And if we switch these and we say the cute cat is gray, right, then we get a different use. Now cute is being used attributively, so it's helping us figure out what cat we're talking about. And then gray is now the predicate and what we're saying about that cat. So we have a predicative use and an attributive use, and we find that modifiers are used that way. Now, modifiers can differ syntactically over whether or not they can be used as one or the other. Uh, and sometimes those differences might be semantic as well, but uh, a good case of the syntactic type involves prepositional phrases. So we can use prepositional phrases in English in a predicative way. But if we put them in an attributive way, then we have to be careful because we can't put it before cat, but we can put it after cat. So we can't say the on the shelf cat is cute, but we can easily say the cat on the shelf is cute. And so in that case, we get syntactic differences in attributive uh, senses. But one of the questions we'll see is whether or not we want different meanings for our modifiers based on whether they're predicative or attributive. Now another kind of meaning, another kind of modification involves whether or not the modification is uh, narrowing down the kinds of things we're talking about. So here's gray again. The gray cat is cute. Here, where gray is helping us narrow down from the set of cats to the set of cute cats, or sorry, to the set of gray cats. So now we're not looking at you know just cats in general, but just the gray ones. And so what we're doing then is uh, restricting our focus, and we call this a restrictive modifier. Um, and we can get restrictive modifiers, you know, with all sorts of modifiers. So another example is the cat on the floor is cute. And when we use a restrictive modifier, then we are using the modifier to, to set up a contrast between the things with the property and the things without it. So when we say the gray cat is cute, it's restrictive because we're now not talking about the other colored cats. When we say the cat on the floor is cute, we're not talking about the cat on the shelf. We're talking about the one on the floor. 
and so forth. Contrast that with non-restrictive. Non-restrictive modifiers add additional information, but don't help us single out the actual thing we're talking about. And usually it's because it's already singled out. So when we say the cat on the floor is cute, we're saying right, there is one unique cat in the context that is on the floor. But there might be other cats. But if we say the cat, pause, on the floor, pause is cute. Then the, the, noun, the determiner phrase, the cat, singles out the particular cat. On the floor is telling us something about the cat, but it's almost like a side piece of information. And if you took it away, you'd still have the same cat. And so non-restrictive modification adds a particular kind of information. And uh, it doesn't seem like it's propositional content will be computed in the same way as the restrictive modifiers. Now, one of the most interesting developments in recent years involves a, a compositional semantics that helps us include non-restrictive meanings, uh, but that's a bit advanced for our level, and we're going to stick uh, with restrictive modifiers and set the non-restrictive ones off to the side. Now, um, another kind of Restrict, now, if we're just talking about restrictive meaning, although I guess the, some of these terms do apply to non-restrictive ones as well, but if we're talking about restrictive meaning, we can divide it as well based on the kinds of uh, relationships between sets that uh, arise. So if we say the cat on the floor is cute, uh, we get you know, cat and on the floor. So we have the intersection of cats and the intersections of things on the floor. We take the unique thing in that set, boom, we get the cat on the floor. And so we say that this is an intersective meaning. It's intersective because it involves the intersection of two sets. Now, one way that you can tell that you have intersective it, uh, meaning is that the, uh, we get an entailment for both of the, of the parts. So given another example, if we say Sue is an Italian violinist, right, then Italian and violinist, right, we have the noun, the, mod, the adjective, the, uh, this, this modification is intersective because when we say Sue is an Italian violinist, then she is in the set of Italians and she is in the set of violinists. So she is in the intersection of those sets. So we say that um, Italian gives us some intersective modification. But if we say well, let's say a famous. If we change Italian to famous, well, then we get a, a distinction. Because now famous, being a famous violinist entails that you're a violinist, but it does not entail that you're famous. You might be famous as far as violinists go, but you might not be famous. You know, to give another example closer to home, um, See, uh, you know, Irena Heim is a famous semanticist. It tells that she's a semanticist. It does not entail that she is generally famous, though. And so we have to be careful about what kind of modification we have here. This is usually called subsective. And it's subsective because instead of saying that she's in the set of famous people in the set of, set of violinists, we say it's, we, she is in the subset of violinists that are famous among violinists. So in that case, it, we don't get the same intelligence. Right. And then there are some modifiers that are not intersective at all. So if we say Sue is a former violinist, Right, then former, uh, 
takes her out of the set of violinists altogether. She can't be a violinist if she used to be one, right? So whatever she, whatever former is doing, it is not providing the set of anything. It's not the set of former things, but it's a set of things that used to be violinists, but that's not in the set of violinists. Um, so what is this kind of meaning? We call it non-intersecting. So we have intersective modification, and then the lecture that focuses on that one, because that's the easy one. But then we have subsective and non-intersective modification. Those can be a little trickier, and we'll, we'll look at ways of trying to, uh, <clears throat> of trying to you know, formalize those and keep them in the realm of our semantics. So we have these different kind of modifiers, and we see them in adjectives, we see them in prepositional phrases, relative clauses, adverbial causes, adverbs, and all sorts of expressions modify. And we'll see many of them throughout the course. Uh, we'll focus on adjectives and prepositional phrases for now, because those are the easiest ones to build. And then we'll move on to the other ones as we go along. And again, we'll focus on restrictive modifiers, the ones that narrow down the set of things we're looking at. And right now we'll focus on intersective modifiers, the kinds that involve said intersection and get entailments of both of the parts.